Welcome to the Sunday podcast of the Prodigal Son. You know, I do these podcasts on Sunday to to feed people. You know, there's people that don't get out and go to church. A lot of them are shut in, don't get to hear the Word. So we're going to give you something today to feed your spirit, to strengthen you for the week to come. Let's see what God's Word has to say today. I want to talk to you today about something that was brought to my attention Uh, Last week, there was some people uh, that had been listening to my podcast. They asked me, they asked me a question and, and it was something that it, it really, I, I thought it was, it was, it was great that they asked the question, but then again, I thought, wow, am I, am I not getting, getting over my, on my podcast, what this is really all about? And and when I when I when I talked to him about it, you know, I, I just felt like that I could do more on the podcast to to enlighten people and to help people to see that my goodness, God's for us. I mean, He's for us, and and He wants more than anything to to see us, you know, just do do wondrous things for Him in this world. And, you know, there's churches on every corner. I mean, everywhere you look, there's a church. I mean, there's, there's churches popping up everywhere. But are we really doing, are we, are we really about the Father's business? Are we doing what He would have us to do? And that is to shine His light into this lost and dying world. This world needs Jesus more than anything than, than anything in history. And, and, and this time that we live in today is one of the most darkest times that I've ever seen in my life. It is the, the, the darkest time. You know, I told a lady at church the other day, and I talked about it on the, on the uh, last week's video or one of the podcasts, one of the two. You know, I told her, I said, we're not out of people to preach to. We're not out of places to preach. We're not out of, not, uh, not out of uh, things to do. I told her, I said, we're out of time. We are out of time. And that is something that you can't get back. You, you can't recall time and, and relive it. When it's gone, it's gone. And, and when, you, when you think about all the people out here in the world that are, are do, going about their daily lives and they don't know that Jesus Christ wants to be part of their life, they don't know that the Father is, is a loving Father. It's time that we, as Christian people, as the church, reached out to those people and, and helped them see and understand that, that God is there for them. He wants more than anything to be part of their lives. He wants more than anything to, to, to be a help to them, to strengthen them, give them, give them strength and victory. In this, in this crazy world that we live in. We live in, a, we live in the darkest time in history. The darkest time in history. Things are going on today that at, at me, 40 years ago, when I was a kid, I'd have thought, there's no way in this world that, that this world could, could be this way. But yet it is. I mean, we're, we, we see fear run rampant. Run rampant. And, and just... From from everywhere you look, you think, my goodness, can it get any worse? Yeah, I think it can. I've I've quit trying to uh, to underestimate what can go on in this world because every time I look around, I think, my goodness, how amazing that this has come this far. It just it it amazes me. But these people ask me a question. And and it just I I I, I kind of laughed and chuckled at it and just told them a simple answer that I knew that you know that I knew they asked me said how how did you find your freedom and and it was just you know it was simple to me I told them I said I found out who I was I found out who I was in my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and there's freedom in that. There's freedom to live in that. And, and I, can't, I can't emphasize that enough, that there is freedom in your life if you'll find out who you are in Jesus Christ. That's what we're doing on this podcast, is, is, is letting people know what God says that they can be 
in Jesus Christ, their Lord and Savior. The Lord gave me a scripture Sunday, and, and I didn't get to say anything about it Sunday, but I feel like the Lord wants me to say something to you about it today, and I've, I've used it a lot, but I want to I wanna read it. It's Matthew, the 11th chapter, and starting with the 28th verse, it says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest for unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Now I want you to look at the first part of that. It says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. These are Jesus' words. And that the, these three scriptures have been a comfort to me for a lot of years, a lot of years. But that first part of that, the, the first verse in that series of verses, it, 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 it went off in me the other Sunday. And what Jesus was, was trying to get over to us in these scriptures is quit trying to work out your own salvation. Quit trying to to be good enough. It says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. And he said, I will give you rest. There is rest in Jesus Christ. There is freedom to live in him. And when you come to that conclusion in your life, you see, I lived, I lived the biggest part of my adult life up until I was 45, 46 years old and struggled my entire Christian life because I tried to carry all the weight on me. What did Jesus say? Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Now, another part of the, uh, of the scripture in the Bible, it says that cast all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. I didn't learn that till I was, I was in my mid-40s. And I, I look back over my life, all the times that I struggled and I, and I failed. Uh, the, the time when I just completely threw up my hands and backslid and, and walked away from church and away from a relationship with God. And, and it just, it, it, it saddens me to look back over my life and, and think that it was so simple, yet I couldn't see it. And, and there's, there's millions that don't see the strength and the victory and the freedom that they can find in Jesus Christ. They, they try to work through it through, through, through good deeds and, and through, through, through some, t some people through rituals and, and through things like that. But what I want you to understand is that it's by grace are we saved. God's unmerited favor there's freedom in finding out what grace is all about. There's freedom in finding out that, that God wants to, to... I heard somebody say this one time. Let me. Th I hope I can get it right. And they said God's grace is like God wanting to treat you like you have never sinned. In other words, His unmerited favor. In other words, you can't do anything. That You can't do anything to merit that favor, it's his free gift. And we walk through life. I, I know I see people on a daily basis that, that, need, that need God in their life. And, and the majority of them would gladly, gladly accept him into their life. But they've made, they've, they've made him into that tyrant that you're seeing in this picture. You know, religion has painted a picture of God being that, that, uh, that unpleasable human sitting on his throne about 40 feet above your head and, and a hammer in one hand and a lightning bolt in the other just waiting for somebody to mess up. That's not God. That's religion. That's what religion has made God out to be. But the bottom part of this picture is what God really is. And that's a loving father with open arms waiting on his child to come to him. 
You know, I this this the name of this channel, the name of my podcast is the Prodigal Son. And years ago, when I come to read eleven fit Mark uh, Luke eleven fifteen, I'm sorry, Luke fifteen eleven through twenty four, the story of the Prodigal Son. When I read those verses, and God opened my eyes to Him being that Father that loving father that loved that young man. All he wanted that young man to do was repent. He That young man didn't have to pay for the, all the mistakes that he made. No, the father paid for him. The father gave him what he, what he threw away, but the father didn't hold it against him when he come home with nothing. He restored him. He loved him. And, and when I come to that conclusion that that wiped away that religious picture that that religion had painted a god in my life and i saw him as that loving father bent over with open arms waiting on me as a child to run to him people we've got a a vast world that is ripe that is ripe to allow Jesus into their heart. They're walking in a hopeless world, looking around and thinking, how in the world can we make it through this mess that we live in? Well, I'm going to tell you how they do it. I'm going to tell you how God wants to do it. He's going to do it through us being a light to the lost and dying world that we walk in the light of Jesus Christ, the one that we reside in, the one that wants to to shine his light and speak through us through his Holy Spirit, to see the, the world that we live in loved into his kingdom, loved into his into his 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 uh his life. And and when we walk through the door of salvation, or when we did walk through the door of salvation, God gave us a, a, uh, a job to do, and that is to go into all the world and preach the gospel, proclaim the good news. And, and God wants us to be the, the light that, that, that he can be through us, and it's up to us to allow him to shine through us. I, over the years... I have wasted opportunity after opportunity after opportunity to be that light because I didn't think that I pleased him enough to be a light, to be a a tool that he could use when all he wanted from me was my willingness, my willingness to turn to him, to repent and turn to him. And when I did, he loved me just like the father did in the, in the prodigal story of the prodigal son. And he wants the world to know that. He wants the world to know that there is freedom to live in this world. There's strength and victory in him to find that freedom to live in this world that we live in. And to walk through this world with our head held high. Why? Why? Because we've been redeemed. We've been redeemed with his blood, with his righteousness. And we've been made the righteousness of God in him, in Jesus Christ. And that's what we're doing on that podcast and on this this channel is, is just urging people to find out who they are or who they can be if they're not born again, who they can be. In Jesus Christ, their Lord and Savior. You know, I was born again in my early 20s and failed God miserably for a lot of years. Even when I was in church and preaching, I I just, I fell short over and over and over because I didn't know who I was. I didn't know what God had done in my life. I knew he had had saved me and, and bore me into his family, but I didn't know what he had made me to be. And that was a new creature. Oh, I didn't know that that he was for me, not against me. I thought he was a disgusted 
person, and he he was just disgusted with me over all the mistakes that I continued to make. And the only reason I continued to make those mistakes is because I didn't know who I was. I wasn't, I wasn't taught who I was. And, and I wasn't taught that, that I could stand in, in the, the, the forgiveness that God had given me. And, and I'd been washed clean through his sacrifice. I feel like the, I need to read something. It's 1 Peter 1.18, and I read this a lot on here too. But it's, it's so important that people find out what God has said in his word about them, to them, and for them. 1 Peter 1.18 says, For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversations received by traditions from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as a lamb without blemish and without spot. We weren't redeemed with what we can muster up in this world, what we, what we can acquire in this world. We weren't re redeemed with the corruptible things of this world. No, we were redeemed with the precious blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. The Son of God that came down here and, and, and lived 33 and a half years in a human body and died sinless before God as a sacrifice for me and you for the sins that we've committed, for our past sins, for our present sins, and for our future sins. If he didn't die for our future sins, we're in trouble because we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. But I like that 24th verse of, the, of Romans 3.24. What Romans 3.23 says, for, for we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. But the 24th verse says, but we've been freely justified or justified freely by him. I want to go back and read it. I want, I want to read that because this is something that, that you need to see and understand. I almost turned right to it. It says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. In Him. We've been redeemed in Him. Justified freely in Him. In Jesus Christ. And when we come to understand that our sins have been washed clean, and God don't see us as we have been or as we are in this world. No, he sees us through the blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. He wants more than anything in this world to see you strong in him so that you can be a light to these people out here that see you and, and, and hopefully they see you and wonder how in the world do they do it. Those people asked me, said, how, how did you find your freedom? And I just kind of chuckled and said, I found out who I was. I found out who I was in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And you can do that today. You can find the freedom to live in this world that we live in. Honey, I promise you, there's going to be times in this in this the whole big scheme of things that 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 if you if if you're not uh, determined have you if you've not determined in your heart that God's got this that you're gonna turn around and look and say my goodness what if, what's going on how am I gonna overcome this but if you have determined of who you are and who this list of scriptures says you are in Him in Jesus Christ. When you find that out, if you have determined that, you can look at all the uncertainty in this world and say, by God's grace, by his mercy, and by his Holy Spirit that lives in me, I will walk through this world unscathed, unscathed, and, and see, see God work in my life. I know he's worked in my life here lately. You, you just wouldn't believe what God has done 
the doors he's as, he has opened and 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 the things that that he will do in in our lives if we'll allow him to oh my goodness i've seen i've i've put myself in a place and told him said lord you do this you show me you help me and and when 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 i allowed him to do that he's opened doors for me that i thought would never open never open but they did, and they're continually opening. And, and I'm seeing my, my family, my family just, just come to the understanding of what God's Word is saying. I mean, just people in my life, are just you thought, man, are they ever going to get straightened out? Just getting straightened out. Oh, I thank God for those truths that I have stood on and believed and found my freedom. And I pray today that you find yours. I pray today that you find the freedom that God wants you to have in your life. I promise you it's there. It's there and it is written down in His Word for you to proclaim over yourself. Put your name in that list of scriptures. In your all those scriptures in there, take those scriptures and 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 use them and put your name in them. Put your name in them. Say, say, Stacy, or your name has been justified freely by his grace. That is through the redemption of Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. You see what I'm saying? You can relate to those scriptures if you'll if you'll proclaim your name in those scriptures and confess those scriptures over your life. You'll see things change. I know I've seen them change in mine. I've seen them. I've seen things change in my life that I thought never would. And it's just like, wow, can can it can this really be happening? Yes, it can. There's nothing, nothing. Impossible to him that believes. Believes what? Believes God. Believes what he says. Has faith in him. Not in, not in your goodness. Not in my goodness. Not in my religion. Not in any, any good deed that I've ever done. No, but I have faith in what he has done in my life. In him. I found that freedom. I found that, that strength and that goodness that God, that God had for me. And he wrote it all down for all of us to live in. See, that's the good thing about it. God didn't just say it and expect us to hear it. He wrote it down and, and hoping that we would find it. You know, we, 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 we have this book that he has written down for us. He has committed himself to a contract, to a covenant. You know, this book... Is, is, is a book of two covenants, the old covenant and the new covenant. And, and, uh, and a covenant is something that God has committed himself to. He has written it down. It is a contract that if, all we, if we'll accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we're, we, are, uh, we are promised that new covenant that Jesus paid for. And it's up to us to receive that covenant and believe it. You know, I told those people the other day, I said, I, I said, you know, we were talking about something, and I said, you know how I overcame things in my life? I said, I praise God. I praise God that I, that I didn't need those things when I, was, when, I, when I was still doing the things that I, that I wanted rid of in my life. It wasn't, wasn't bad stuff. It was just things that, that, that had me bound. It was, it was a medication that I really didn't need. And, and I, told, I told him, I said, you know how over I got away from that? I said, I told, I told him, I said, I thank God. Praised him out loud. Every time I had to take one of those pills, I praised him that I didn't need them in my life. It was for anxiety. That's what it was. I took Xanax for a lot of years, and I knew I didn't need them. I knew there was strength and victory, freedom somewhere. And, and I heard a minister talking about it, talking about a man that quit smoking by thanking God 
that he didn't need them cigarettes all the while he was smoking them. And I thought if that'll work for cigarettes, it'll work for my 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 need or thought I needed anxiety medication. And I started praising God that I didn't I didn't need those pills anymore. <laughs> and it's been years since I've had those pills. Years. And I thank God that I come to understand that that if I'll believe him, nothing is impossible to him that believes. Understand that. Know that. Let me see if I can read if I can find that scripture. I think it's Mark 9 23. I'm almost positive I know it is. Mark 9, 23. If I can get to Mark, I'm in Matthew. Put your glasses on. Mark 9, 23. It says, Jesus said unto him, If thou can believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. If you can believe God, if you can believe God, if you can believe his word, all things are possible to you. Ain't nothing in this world impossible to him that believes, to those that have faith in God, to those that stand on what he says. Find freedom, freedom in him, freedom to live in him. See, Satan wants to keep you bound, keep you bound in your mistakes. Cast all those mistakes and cares upon him and let him, let him lead you today. He wants to do that. Now, I've got a question for you today. Are you born again? Do you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Do you know that you've allowed him to be Lord of you, your life, that you've confessed him as Lord? Because if you haven't, it's easy. It's easy. If you believe God is who he says he is and Jesus came and died on the cross for your sins and was raised on the third day for your justification... All you have to do is confess him as Lord of your life. Because you already believe in your heart. If you believe it, confess him. Make him Lord. Oh, he wants to be Lord of your life today. Oh, I thank God for those truths. Won't you allow Jesus Christ to come into your heart and your life and save you? I promise you, it will be a, it will be a, uh, a something that you do that you'll never, ever regret. He'll do things in your life that you'll think, my goodness, how in the world did that happen? Because you got born again. You allowed the Holy Spirit to come into your heart and into your life and lead you to His Word. And His Word will give you freedom that you've wanted your entire life. Be born again today. Make Jesus Christ Lord of your life today and watch Him change your life forever. Hey, I'm so glad that you tuned into this channel. Listen now, it, go to our website, get in touch with us. If you got a prayer request, send it to me. I want to hear from you. I want to hear what God is doing in your life. I want to hear what you need him to do in your life. If you got a testimony, send it to us. Oh, it thrills me to hear from people that, that, that have allowed God to, to work through them and, and to guide them and direct them. I thank God for people that are looking to God's Word for strength. Go to our website. Get in touch with us. Now, listen, I'm going to take just a minute and thank all the partners. Partners, thank you for all that you do sowing into this ministry, faithfully sowing into this ministry, helping us do what God has commissioned us to do, and that is to give His Word away free of charge to anybody that will listen. Oh, I thank God for the truth the truth that our partners are helping us spread all over the world. Thank you, partners. I pray Mark 10, 29, and 30 over you today. Now, if you're not a partner, pray about becoming a partner. Whether you're a partner or whether you're not, share this video. Share our podcast on your social media so others can be set free. Set free from the bondages of religion and man's traditions. But if you're not a partner... Pray about becoming a partner. Pray about what God would have you to do to sow into his kingdom today. Go to our website. Get in touch with us. It's the-prodigalson.com.